Hi, this is Bastian, and today we're going to look at the Cole Koltanowski and the Cole Zuckertort systems uh, played against each other. Now, I will be playing black, and I will be taking on the Cole Zuckertort formation. Of course, when we play this with black, we may also call this um, the Slav defense, as we see against uh, Queen's Gambit type of openings. So, d4. Knight to f6, knight to f3, d5, e3, e6, bishop to d3, bishop to d6, white castles, knight b to d7, c3. So you're seeing the Cole Koltanowski here. b6. And this is with um, a mirror image, uh, the Cole Zucker Torch system played as black. However, as black, you are one move behind, behind in the opening. White continues the development of his system. Bishop to b7 and b3. And this move is actually important because it switches the tempo of the game. Um, it's a bit of a waiting move. So what we are about to see with black, uh, we may as well play with white as uh, the Cold Zucker Tort in the opening. Um, B3 is a very passive move, designed to break with uh, C4 in the center. So a typical passive uh, Kolpanowski uh, development. I castle first. A3, another passive move. A rook to C8. So uh, what we may do in uh, Zuckertort systems is develop or rook to the C8. Uh, square with black in order to protect for a c5 pawn push after which uh, pawns may become exchanged we will end up with the rook on a half open or even an open file later in the game c4 so white continues with this plan supported by the b3 pawn and i play c5 so i'm not about to lose tempo uh, White has done nothing wrong, uh, but he's slow in development and very solid. And I'm trying to take initiative and use a call Zuckertort system with black. Pawn takes pawn. I recapture. Now, both of us may end up with um, a strong pawn island, depending on which pawn captures which pawn. Pawn takes pawn, I get the pawn island. But now you can see the trade off. Um, White may develop his bishop to the b2 square and also adopt a sort of Sukertort formation instead of a, a Koltanowski formation where he had develops uh, the bishop normally. And if White fanchettos, we can see that he has two adjacent diagonal files and a strong attack uh, on my king. And black, on the other hand, with the Zuckertort system, has a strong pawn island in the center. However, there is a bit of an issue now for black, because this pawn is blocking this bishop for the moment. So this pawn is going to have to move, but it's not that easy. Bishop to b2. White completes his development, and if I were to play d4 now, we can see a problem for black. d4, so I would like to get uh, two adjacent diagonals as well for my bishops. But now, white can play pawn takes pawn, pawn recaptures, and knight takes pawn. And we can see that black is a pawn down uh, after completing his development too early. So, we can't move our pawn just yet. And we can see that our bishop, for the moment, is locked out of the game. And ironically, White, with his slower Koltanowski development, has come to a Zuckertort formation uh, with an attack on my king. I would say both positions are still equal. But it goes to show that a passive de uh, position of White is not necessarily bad, and it can change uh, very quickly into an attack. So not being able to push the pawn, I continue my development with rook to e8, rook to the half open file. 
bishop to f5. And what it does now is create a pin on my d7 knight, punishing me for um, developing my rook to a c8. Of course, this knight on f6 is under attack by the bishop, which means um, if I don't want to double my pawns, which is bad because they're protecting the king, I can no longer move my queen because it is needed to protect my uh, f6 knight. So, good development by white. I play rook to c7, a little bit of an awkward move. And we can see that I have to play a little bit of waste, wasteful moves in order to counter my opponent's uh, powerful development. Uh, I am still stuck with my bishop on b7 with little hopes of an attack myself. Queen to c2, another excellent move by white creating a battery on uh, the h7 square. Also, uh, developing the queen on the half-open uh, file, which may become important later in the game. I'm forced to play the awkward g6 move. So already, I am uh, my, my pawn shield uh, protecting my king is already unraveling with um, white's attacks. On my position. Bishop to d3, so the bishop is forced to retreat. Now I get the chance to develop a little bit. Knight to e5, so I want to get rid of some of uh, white's pieces. Knight takes knight, bishop recaptures. Trying to get rid of uh, the annoying um, Fanchetto bishop, which has a completely open diagonal. Forced to uh, exchange because of the attack on the rook. I recapture. And now it looks like it is black who is getting in some good developments with um, a rook on the open rank. Rook to um, d1, rook on the half open file. And queen to uh, d6. This move is used to um, protect the c5 pawn, so I can now move uh, my rook to, let's say, e7 to create a battery. Also, it um, develops the queen a little bit better. Rook a to c1, so you're seeing a battery of um, two pieces on my pawn on c5. So I will be needing my two pieces to protect this pawn. And this, of course, prevents uh, attacking development of my pieces. So if, say, rook to h5 would be a possible continuation to create uh, an attack on the h2 pawn. It's perfectly all right to play. But I play a different move. And I'm going to try and lure out my opponent. Um, by creating complexer positions. I play rook to e8 instead. I undevelop my rook and decide to try and attack the same h2 square one move later with developing my knight to g4. White obviously plays knight to f3, um, creating a defense on the h2 uh, square. And now it becomes impossible for my undeveloped rook to develop because we see that e5 is covered and e4 is covered. So the only available square looks to be e6. So perhaps I have made things more difficult for myself. Let's see if knight to g4 is played now. White can simply kick it back. So that's no longer a um, solid attack. I continue with rook to e6. And this seems a very awkward development. And it leaves white with a lot of uh, possibilities to develop. Uh, the only thing I can do is develop my rook on um, the sixth um, uh, file and continue with rook to f6, which seems very logical at first. 
to give white so much um, extra possibilities. Also, you need to keep in mind that my pawn island is no longer very strong. It has become under a serious attack with uh, white's battery on c5. So it looks like I am in a, a bad position at this point. White seizes the initiative and plays knight to d4, thinking I've made a mistake. He's trying to kick back my rook from the third square. I cannot recapture the knight because of uh, an attack, discovered attack on my rook, if I were to recapture with the pawn. Also, we notice that the knight can now jump uh, to b5 and fork queen and rook. So this looks like an excellent move to play for white. And this is where the difference in understanding of the middle game will decide who will win or lose. I continue. Well, let's see if uh, the options. Pawn takes pawn, queen takes rook, which is bad for black. Queen takes rook recaptures, so the most obvious continuation will lose for black very quickly. Rook to e5, because there's no longer defender on the e5 square with uh, the knight gone. This will allow uh, rook to uh, h5 move. But now knight to b5, and we have a fork, and black once again is lost. I play knight to g4, and continue with an attack of my own, sacrificing my rook on e6. Now, let's look at a few more options. If h3 is played, which wasn't, I can continue with queen to h2 check, King flees, queen h1 check, king to e2. You notice now that there are two attackers on my pieces. Queen takes pawn, pawn takes knight, pawn takes uh, knight with a discovered attack, queen recaptures, rook takes uh, pawn check, and it can no longer be recaptured. Because of uh, the discovered attack with uh, the discovered check with the queen, king to d2, queen takes pawn check, bishop to e2, queen takes bishop is a checkmate. So we can see that after my knight development, it is not easy for a white to kick this knight back. So this will not work. An alternative, let's say knight takes rook, most obvious continuation. We can continue with queen takes pawn check, king to f1. Now, uh, pawn recaptures uh, the knight on e6. Now, let's say a4, there's not much that white can do. Rook to f7. And we have created a half open file. If rook to d2 to defend, we can continue our check, check and mate. If not defender, but say king to e1. Rook takes, attacking the queen. Uh, queen is forced to recapture. Because of uh, our mate threats with the queen. Uh, we can grab the queen. King takes knight. d4. Again, threatening to attack. And we can see at a very late stage that our final piece has become active. And with a lot of exchanges, we can now push the d4 square. So we need to understand when we have to push uh, the d4 square. And at this point, it is uh, in the end game. So pawn recaptures, queen takes check, and it's uh, all over for um, white with a forced mate once again.
or a losing position at least. Let me check. Uh, quite a losing position with uh, minus seven. So it's not yet a fourth mate, but there's no hope for um, White at this point. All right. So let's not continue with this line anymore and let's take a look at the other options. Let's shut down the engine. So you see that H3 doesn't work. You see that knight takes rook. Uh, the purpose of developing the knight on d4 doesn't work. But white still has another option. Knight to b5 for king, queen and rook. But then we can simply continue our um, check attack. Queen takes h2 check, king f1, d4. So this is the point where we can play the d4 move, activating our bishop. Again, sacrificing a rook on c7. So when we see at the lines, we have to be willing to sacrifice either the e6 rook or the c7 rook, which are placed simply in the center to um, get this knight out of the way, which is uh, the strong defender. Uh, knight takes rook. And we can crash through with um, rook takes. Now, of course, there are other possibilities like um, queen takes g2. Check, which is perfectly all right. Um, doesn't matter much. Rook takes e3. And of course, if rook recaptures, um, queen takes h1 check. So we're not yet capturing the g2 pawn. King to e2. Queen takes uh, g2 check. King to e1. Queen to g1 check. King to d2. Queen to uh, takes e3, check and mate. And we can see now the point of our uh, push, and this is very clever. It also covers um, the c3 uh, square for an escape of the king, which is all clocked up, um, locked uh, in the middle of his own pieces. So, we now have seen both the h3 move, we have seen the Knight takes rook move, and we have seen the knight to b5 for king, um, queen, and rook move. And we can see that none of these defenses or attacks actually work white for white. So uh, it's my turn now to crack open white's position. White is now forced to play the g3 move. Um, preventing an attack, but also of course, weakening his pawn shield. I continue with rook to f6, and it looks like my plan uh, has worked. I've moved my rook from e5 to e8 to e6, with the very modest advantage of using the sixth um, file. And now to uh, f6 to create an attack on the f2 uh, pawn. Now, of course, the threat now is um, rook takes pawn on f2, threatening the queen, threatening the pawn on h2. Let's see how white may continue. Um, once again, there are a few possibilities. Let's say first a random move a4. We'll continue with that line. There we go. White is down two pawns. Obviously very bad for um, white. But it's also a, a mate because after queen takes pawn on g3, losing the third pawn. Rook to d2 perhaps. Knight takes e3, check and mate is um, possible. So that happens with a random move. A4. Let's see what other uh, options white has. Knight to b5. Uh, again, threatening the fork. And we always have to be very wary that white can play this move. Queen to e5. Sacrificing our rook once again. 
in order to uh, crash through with our second rook on the f6 square. Knight takes rook, rook takes pawn, queen moves, and you have a little bit of the same situation. I can grab the pawn on h2 as I did before, or I can crash through with um, queen takes e3, creating a discovered uh, check. So let's try that. Queen takes, rook to f1 perhaps, rook to h2, check, discovered, rook blocks, checkmate. So let's go back. Random move doesn't work. Knight to b5 doesn't work because our attack is too strong and we can afford to um, lose our rook in the attack. Rook to d2 immediately to prevent f2 um, with uh, additional support of the queen. This is the move that was played. So now watch for black. Is it time to? Um, Grab the knight on d4. So let's find out. If I grab the knight, queen takes rook, queen takes queen, rook takes rook, and no, white has the best position. So uh, black has to be careful for the fork, but white equally has to be careful for my attack on the knight. So grabbing the knight at this point is not possible. So there's a lot of tension in the situation. And it can um, go both ways if one of us makes a mistake. I play queen to e5. Now there's no longer the possibility of a fork. And white cannot grab the pawn because then simply rook recaptures. Creating two attackers on the knight, among other things. If a4 is played now, a random move, we can afford to play a pawn takes knight. If queen recaptures the rook, once again we are sacrificing the rook. It doesn't matter which piece takes it. Um, the knight is out of the way. Pawn takes pawn. We get a lot of tempo attacking the uh, rook. If queen takes queen, knight takes. So the queens are off the board. I still have an attack on the rook. Pawn takes pawn, of course. Um, we see that the bishop is protected by the rook. Knight to f3 with a fork, and we can see that um, black is the one with the winning attack. King to g2, I grab the rook. Rook to f2, d4, and we can see that at the end game, once again, it is time to push our d pawn. Uh, check. You notice that the king is locked in. Uh, king has to move, and we can grab another pawn, protecting our knight on d2. So, let's go back. There's only about three variations we um, need to consider. So, a4 doesn't work. Knight to b5 was the move that was played, attacking my rook on um, c7. The rook needs to move to say e7 and we can see that um, white's plan to attack my pawn center has paid off. So there's no longer any protection on my pawn on c5 for instance. However, we have a great compensation with um, three pieces on the half open file and a strong attack on white's king. So let's see at a few variations. If a random move is played, I can play queen to h5 to attack the pawn on h2. So that's one attacking idea. If h3 is played, um, in order to um, uh, attack my knight on uh, g4. I can play uh, rook takes pawn on f2, crashing through. If pawn um, grabs the knight, queen takes pawn, check. 
with uh, a mate so it's uh, not possible to uh, kick away the knight so if a random move and kicking away the knight don't work perhaps h4 will help this prevents crushing through with um, the queen on h2 so let's see what that does we can once again crush through with um, rook takes pawn on f2 if rook recaptures queen takes pawn check rook to g2 queen takes pawn check um, if say king to h1 we can continue with uh, opening up a diagonal for our bishop and we can see that the rook is lost if another move is played say queen to f2 I can grab the queen so that's also impossible so let's go back there are again um, about four variations uh, we need to consider um, a4 random move doesn't work chasing away the knight doesn't work h4 to block a queen on um, h2 doesn't work what was played is a um, final variation queen takes pawn and I really don't think that there is a better move for white uh, which means I don't think it's possible for white to um, stop my attack queen takes pawn with an attack on um, the rook on e7 in case I move my queen to h5 so queen to h5 we see that um, there's um, an attack now on the rook on e7 but this doesn't really help white because uh, or helps black because um, after h4 this queen has become useless in the attack if we crash through queen takes rook rook takes and um, rook to f1 uh, to defend and actually this position would be better for white so that's not the right way to continue our attack so let's check the engine to confirm this we have a um, score of plus three or so for white so clearly this isn't the best continuation so let's go back a few moves at this point after queen takes we can see that um, White already has the lost game with a score of minus 1.8, which is good for black. And if we go back one move, as I said before, there's actually nothing better for um, white to do than to grab uh, the c5 palm because everything else simply loses more. So basically, already a lost game um, for white in the middle game. Queen takes a uh, pawn, best move, but bad for white. I continue, not with queen to h5, but rook to c6, retaking uh, the open file. And white is forced to exchange uh, in order to have hopes to survive. So we can see that a pawn, a minor piece, and a rook have been traded uh, for the queen which is only the difference uh, of one, one or uh, two points depending on which position we're in um, so I haven't won yet and white can still fight for a draw and it will be um, a very tough fight so I continue with knight takes pawn crushing through let's stop the engine if pawn takes knight right now queen takes check attacking uh, the rook so that's not possible if um, king to f1 I can grab uh, the rook for instance alternatively queen to f3 check check 
mates is also possible. So I grab the pawn, and it's not possible for um, uh, White to um, prevent that. Rook to c1 instead, bring back the defender. A6. And we notice now that there are only a few squares for um, White to move to. Of course, the c7 and a8, uh, a7 square means White will outright lose the knight. d4, same thing. So, White may try knight to c3, but then of course, we can put our um, second rook on the open open file and create the discovered attack on um, the rook on c1. And of course, if another defender is brought in, we can grab it with the knight. So, simply, white must lose pieces here. If knight to a2, perhaps to uh, protect the knight, looks good, looks good at the first um, sight. But rook grabs rook. Knight grabs rook, queen to a1, so we will gain a piece, rook to c2 to protect, knight grabs, bishop recaptures, queen takes check, and it's all over for white. So let's go back, a6, attacking the knight. Rook to e2, counterattacking my knight on e3, with tempo attacking my queen later on on the open file. d4, finally, uh, although there's no longer a bishop on uh, b7, protecting the knight. Rook to c8 check, and in between move. But white, of course, wants to recapture uh, the knight on e3. Pawn takes knight. Pawn takes knight, a4, take, take. So white's final hope is to try and promote the a8, um, the a4 uh, pawn to a8, or perhaps lock up my pieces in order to um, prevent white from doing so. Um, so it's not over yet. We still have to be a little bit careful. Pawn takes pawn, bishop to b5, creating an outpost f5, so I really need to um, get my final few pawns into the attack in order to secure the win. King to f1, f4, take, take, check, king to e1, g4, attacking rook on c8, rook um, to c2 prevents the attack, rook to f7, Rook to the open file. Rook to e8, trying to attack my pawn. Queen to g1, check. King to e2. Rook to f2, check. Uh, king to d3, uh, protecting. But I'm not going to simply exchange now, because uh, we are going to grab a free rook. Queen to d1, check. We lose the pawn, but we gain a rook. Rook to e7 check, king to h6, king to f6 would have been faster um, regarding a forced mate. So I didn't see the forced mate, um, nor did I really uh, look for it. So I'm just going to grab the remaining pawns and pieces. Not much interesting left. I exchange the final piece. And I come in for the mate. Um, so a very long and tough game. And it goes to show that it helps to understand uh, middle game positions, both with the Cole Koltanowski and the Cole Zuckertart systems. And that they aren't just amateur systems uh, with the bishop takes a7 sacrifice. I hope you enjoyed watching this game and learned a thing or two. Um, 
please leave a comment and have a great evening.